The independent news outlet ProPublica has published another damning investigation in its series on the connections between Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas and donors who may be impacted by cases that come before his court. That's the nation's highest court. The latest story concerns the libertarian billionaires Charles and David Koch, who've spent millions on conservative causes and funneled vast donations into Republican campaigns. The report's headline, Clarence Thomas secretly participated in Koch Network donor events, and follows up on past reports that Clarence Thomas secretly accepted luxury trips from GOP donor Harlan Crow and many others. In the new piece, ProPublica reports Justice Thomas has attended Koch donor events at least twice over the years, and, quote, that puts Thomas in the extraordinary position of having served as a fundraising draw for a network network that's brought cases before the Supreme Court, including one of the most closely watched of the upcoming term." Unquote. The pending Supreme Court case challenges a precedent-setting case known as Chevron and seeks to limit the power of federal agencies to issue regulations in areas ranging from the environment to labor rights to consumer protection. David Koch died in 2019. His brother, Charles Koch, did not respond to the new report. But a Koch Network spokesperson told ProPublica, quote, Thomas wasn't present for fundraising conversations. The idea that attending a couple events to promote a book or give dinner remarks, as all the justices do, could somehow be undue influence just doesn't hold water, the spokesperson said. For more on the details of this new investigation, including how Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas was at the Bohemian Grove, a secretive all-men's retreat in Northern California with David Koch and filmmaker Ken Burns, among others, we're joined by Justin Elliott, reporter for ProPublica. Welcome back, Justin, to Democracy Now! Lay out this latest expose. Sure. So, what we found is that uh, Justice Thomas, as you mentioned, has attended and participated in multiple Koch donor summits. So, essentially, uh, the Koch brothers founded this uh, powerful network of political groups, spends hundreds of millions of dollars on elections, also uh, employs lawyers who bring cases to the courts. Um, and every January, uh, they have a big donor summit out in Palm Springs, California, uh, where Charles Koch has a mansion. Um, other wealthy business people fly out there. Uh, they have a meeting. They sort of review what they've been doing. It's, it's, it's essentially their big marquee fundraising event of the year. And that's the event that we found Justice Thomas had made undisclosed trips to. Most recently, in January 2018, we found the justice was flown out there on a private jet, gave a talk to a small dinner of, of high-dollar Coke donors, people that gave over a million dollars. And none of this was disclosed, <clears throat> um, as, as it should have been, on his uh, annual financial disclosures. Uh, I wanted to get your response to, it's rare to get these justices commenting like this, Supreme Court Justice Elena Kagan giving an address at Notre Dame Law School on Friday after uh, your new report on Justice Thomas came out, she was asked if the high court needs a code of ethics. She didn't mention Justice Thomas by name in her response. Right now, we're in a situation where we've committed to following certain kinds of ethical rules respecting judges, um, but, uh, but have said we will only be guided by others. So. You know, we've committed to following the gift rules that other judges follow and uh, the outside income rules that other judges follow. But other judges have a very extensive code of ethics that um, governs everything that they do. And there's been some concern, and I think it's legitimate concern, that not uh, that the Supreme Court is, a, is, a, is, is an unusual kind of court in certain respects and that some of the rules do not fit quite as well in, at the Supreme Court level than they do at um, the level of lower courts. But, um, but of course, what we could do is just adapt the code of conduct that the other court systems have in order to refle reflect those um, uh, slight or certain differences. And I think it would be a good thing for the court to do that. 
So that's Supreme Court Justice Elena Kagan. Um, Justin Elliott, your response. How significant is what she's saying and how many Congress members agree with her? I want to mention that Brett Kavanaugh, um, the other Supreme Court justice, uh, recently said the court may, quote, soon address a code of ethics on the high court, and Chief Justice John Robertson may called ethics scandals at the court a, quote, issue of concern and said justices were, quote, continuing to look at things. Your response to all this? Yeah. So, first of all, just to explain, I mean, as uh, Justice Kagan mentioned, um, all other federal judges below the Supreme Court level have, uh, you know, extensive rules, a code of ethics, advisory opinions. You know, we actually quoted uh, a, a retired federal judge, a George W. Bush appointee, in our new story, who said that if he had gone to a, a Coke donor su summit, uh, there would have been a disciplinary proceeding. And, and the reason for that is, uh, lower court judges are not supposed to be involved in either political events or fundraising. And this Coke donor summit is, you know, arguably both of those things. Um, but as Justice Kagan said, um, those rules don't apply to the Supreme Court. Um, I think thing is significant, although I will note that they've been talking about adopting some sort of formal rules for at least five or six years now. And the reporting on that is that the court is looking for unanimity among the nine justices uh, and apparently been having trouble getting that. Uh, so I think it's really something that if, if they if, if 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 they adopt any rules, we'll really have to take a close look at them to see if there's any teeth or if it's just sort of abstractions about the importance of uh, being independent and, and acting. Um, we just showed a picture of Ken Burns, David Koch, uh, who has since died, and uh, and um, and Justice Clarence Thomas. Uh, can you talk about that gathering? Sure. So another part of this story connects back to our previous reporting on Harlan Crow, who's a, a Republican billionaire political donor out of Dallas, uh, who's been essentially subsidizing Justice Thomas's life for many decades, uh, bringing him on expensive vacations around the around the world, uh, paying tuition for relatives and other other things. Um, what we found now is that Harlan Crow has been taking Justice Thomas on more trips over the years, previously undisclosed trips, out to the Grove, which, if folks haven't heard of it, is this uh, all-men's retreat takes place every July in a, a redwood forest in Sonoma County, where um, essentially political and corporate elites meet. You have to be a member of uh, this club to get in. Uh, fa famously, uh, Henry Kissinger has been going for many decades. Um, and what we found is that uh, Justice Thomas has been going there for years. He's a regular there with Harlan Crow. Um, and he stays in this camp, which is essentially like a fraternity with a, a couple dozen men. Um, and other members of that camp include Charles and David Koch. It's called Midway. Um, and what we were told, talking to many people that have spent time there over the years, is that uh, the justice developed this relationship and bond uh, with the Kochs on these trips to the Bohemian Grove, which really answers a question in part that we've been wondering about, which is what is going on on all these trips and vacations that Harlan Crow is taking Justice Thomas on? It turns out part of the answer is, you know, he's spending time with people like the Kochs who, who have active interests and, in fact, cases at the Supreme Court. So, if you can talk about a case that's coming up, I'm looking at one um, article in The Hill, Chevron case, Supreme Court could take sledgehammer to agency power. Explain what this case is all about and why that's called Chevron. Yeah, so it takes its name from a from a pre previous Supreme Court case, a landmark case back in the mid-1980s called Chevron. Um, and this is something that most people haven't heard of. I hadn't heard of it until a few months ago, but uh, it turns out to be, you know, incredibly important. Uh, it's one of the most cited uh, Supreme Court cases of recent decades. And essentially what it says is that— And it's really uh, Chevron versus NRDC, right, the Natural Resources Defense Council. That's right. And uh, essentially what it says is that judges and courts— should defer to federal agencies like the EPA or the FDA or the Department of Labor 
when those agencies come up with regulations. So it, it really insulates the uh, the agencies from from challenges from business and and others uh, when when the federal agencies issue a regulation that somebody might not like. Um, and you know, for for years now, uh, the Koch political network has had this ruling in its sights. And the case in the upcoming term, that case is called Loper Bright, um, and it was actually brought by uh, Koch network lawyers who are representing the plaintiffs. They brought it in the lower court and have shepherded it to the Supreme Court. Um, and a lot of legal observers think that the Supreme Court is, with the new conservative supermajority, is going to use this case. Uh, as uh, the opportunity to overturn this, Chev this Chevron precedent back from the 1980s, uh, which would, you know, people we talked to said would just have huge ramifications for, uh, you know, the executive branch's ability to issue regulations in, in basically every part of American life. And explain exactly how it would benefit the Koch brothers, whose fundraisers, apparently, you exposed uh, Justice Thomas um, attended and was the draw for. Yeah, well, uh, ideologically, of course, the Kochs are uh, libertarians, you know, going back many decades. Uh, you know, we noted in our story that when David Koch actually ran for vice president on the uh, Libertarian Party ticket back in 1980 and the platform called for just abolishing the EPA, Department of Energy, U.S. Post, Postal Service, a whole range of federal agencies. Um, but, in, you know, the, the Kochs uh, have, you know, run, I believe, the largest or second largest private company in, in the country uh, that operates in a lot of highly regulated sectors, particularly um, energy, oil, gas, that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, for years have been bristling at uh, government regulations, challenging regulations in court. And if this Chevron doctrine is overturned by the Supreme Court, it's going to make it much, much easier to challenge a regulation if you as a company don't like it. So it's the type of thing that it's not going to be like the Dobbs decision where abortion rights are taken away overnight, but uh, it, it, it can affect um, you know, vast numbers of, of regulations going forward, uh, basically in, in any area you can conceive of. Now, Justice Thomas has flipped on Chevron? Yeah. The other really striking thing about this, and we still don't really have all the answers, is that Justice Thomas, uh, 20 years ago, was a supporter of Chevron, wrote decisions citing it, uh, expanding it, actually. Um, and then in the last few years, um, culminating in 2020, he came out in a, a written opinion saying, um, actually, I've changed my mind and, and Chevron is unconstitutional and we should overturn it. Uh, this is extremely unusual, especially for Justice Thomas, who has a reputation as being sort of stubbornly independent and unmovable in his views. Now, to be clear, we don't know that uh, this is related to his relationship with the Kochs, but it's something that you almost never see. In fact, I can't think of another example where Justice Thomas has done a full 180 turn on an issue. Um, so that's part of the backdrop here. And Leonard Leo, the Federalist Society leader, said in a statement to you, to ProPublica, quote, Justice Thomas attends events all over the country, as do all the justices. I was privileged to join him. All the necessary due diligence was performed to ensure the justices' attendance at the events was compliant with all ethics requirements. Your response to that, and then just summarize. I mean, uh, ProPublica has published one story after another. One, would Clarence Thomas be recusing himself? Um, and where these stories—it's um, not only Harlan Crow, it's not only the Koch brothers, you also had that piece in between, talking about other billionaires subsidizing his vacations uh, to the tune of millions of dollars. Yeah, well, in terms of the recusal, uh, it's another thing about the Supreme Court. Uh, the recusal decisions are made entirely by each justice, him or herself. So uh, Chairman Durbin of the Senate Judiciary Committee called on Friday for Justice Thomas to recuse himself from this Loper Bright case that the Koch Network has brought to the court. Uh, Justice Thomas hasn't responded yet that I've seen. Um, you know, in, in terms of w where the stories are going, uh, you know, we're, we're still re reporting on, on the entire Supreme Court. And, you know, if anyone out there knows anything, please get in touch. Um, but, you know, I, I think, and to Leonard Leo's statement just briefly that mentioned ethical requirements being met, uh, I mean, they did not elaborate on that. And everyone we've talked to said that 
uh, you know, ethical requirements were not met, in particular, uh, being flown out to Palm Springs on a, a private jet paid for by somebody else, apparently, is something that you, you just have to disclose, and uh, Justice Thomas did not hear. What else are you working on, Justin? Um, can't, can't talk about what's next, but uh, still on the Supreme Court beat with my colleagues, so uh, we're, we're, we're still going on it. Well, I want to thank you so much for being with us. Justin Elliott, reporter for ProPublica, co-wrote their new report, headline, Clarence Thomas secretly participated in Koch network donor events. And just this interesting point, a piece in The Guardian. Um, Workers at Bohemian Grove, that uh, secretive uh, one, workers at the Bohemian Grove, one of the most elite and secretive clubs in the U.S., have filed a lawsuit alleging numerous unfair labor practices, including 16-hour workdays without breaks and a failure to pay overtime and minimum wage to the workers.